How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we're taking a look at the 2018 iPad Pro. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by our friends over at Hyper who make awesome USB-C hubs. Of course, these hubs work with the Mac, but now that the iPad Pro has USB-C, these hubs work on your iPad. And not just that, Hyper is actually making a brand new hub specifically for the iPad Pro. Check the link down below in the description for more details. Okay, so here's the iPad Pro. We're going to unbox it right now, but before that, Let's talk about pricing and configuration because this iPad is the most expensive iPad ever. Now it comes in silver or space gray with capacities of 64, 256, 512, and for the first time, one terabyte of storage. You have an 11 inch option and you get a 12.9 inch option, which I personally recommend. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so you can choose between your silver or space gray, but here's the interesting thing. Starts at 64 gigabytes for a thousand bucks, goes up to 256 for about 1150, 512, 1350, and then one terabyte, 1750. So you're paying a 750 buck premium to go from 64 gigabytes to one terabyte of storage. You can only imagine the incredible margins that Apple's making from this. And of course, if you want cellular, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more. These iPads come in at about two grand after taxes. So not cheap at all. And that sort of sets the stage for this whole conversation as to whether this should be treated as a bona fide pro machine, not because just the name, but because of the price as well. So let's go ahead and unbox the iPad Pro here. We'll take off the plastic wrap and we'll lift the box here. And inside, of course, you have the iPad Pro on top. We'll just remove that. And from there, it's a pretty typical iPad unboxing, but there are some noteworthy changes inside, starting with the power adapter, which is now brand new. It's a USB-C power adapter, an 18 watt power adapter. So you get faster charging with the iPad Pro out of the box, which is nice. And you get a USB type C cable as well for connecting the iPad Pro to the power adapter. All right, so let's look at the documentation. You have the iPad Pro getting started guide, and it's obviously going to be a little bit different because there's a whole bunch new here with the brand new iPad Pro for 2018. So you may wanna give that a once over to briefly familiarize yourself with what's new. Now there are also, of course, regulatory information inside the documentation packet. And because this is a cellular version of the iPad Pro, you do have a SIM eject tool for the Nano SIM. There's also an eSIM embedded inside the iPad Pro as well. And of course, what major Apple product unboxing would be complete without the Apple stickers? They are inside, don't worry. All right, so now let's get to the meat and potatoes. The iPad Pro, this is the one terabyte cellular version in silver, I opted to go for silver because, you know, I'm just kind of getting tired of space gray. Everything's space gray these days. So I thought, hey, why not do it throwback style and go for silver? And excuse my voice, I have a wicked case of bronchitis right now, so just bear with me, please. All right, so here's the 2018 iPad Pro powered on. You can see those rounded corners. You see that super thin bezel, that all screen quote unquote design. Uh, it's not technically all screen. There still is a bezel there, but the bezel is very, very thin compared to the outgoing model. Here is the last generation iPad Pro, and here is the new iPad Pro. You can see it is smaller in all dimensions, yet the screen size remains the same, which is super impressive. So it's a more portable device. It's easier to tote around. It looks better. Yet it is still a little bit unwieldy though. I will admit that compared to the 11 inch version, this one takes a little bit more effort to hold in the hand, even with the reduced footprint. So keep that in mind. You may wanna try it out in the store if you're on the fence between the 11 and 12.9 inch versions. Okay, so let's talk about features. You have the true depth camera sensor housing, definitely one of the reasons to upgrade to the new iPad Pro because it enables Face ID, which is just awesome. On the rear, you get a redesigned 12 megapixel camera to fit inside that super thin chassis. And because of that, it does come with some technical limitations. The smart connector has been relocated to the rear of the iPad Pro. It works with that brand new smart keyboard folio. 
and then you get five microphones which enhance FaceTime calls. You get one, two, three, four, and then one on the front to make five. Definite step up from the dual microphone system from last generation. And while the iPad Pro removes the home button, you still do get the two volume buttons on the side and you still get the sleep wake button on top. For speakers, you get a new woofer and tweeter pair in each corner, which delivers more dynamic sound, even though the chassis is one millimeter thinner. Lightning is no more on the iPad Pro. Now you get USB type C for charging and IO. And there's a new magnetic connector for the second gen Apple Pencil that allows it to connect, pair and charge wirelessly. And although the cellular iPad Pro supports eSIM, there's still a nano SIM slot. And speaking of cellular, the antenna lines have been redesigned. There are now antenna lines on both the top and the bottom of the iPad Pro. And unlike previous generations of iPad Pro, the chamfered edges are no more. And unlike previous generations, you get black bezels even with the silver iPad Pro. And the headphone jack on the new hardware is no more. That's a legitimate concern for creative professionals who use this on a regular basis. And you know what that means? It's dongle time. But to be fair, some of these changes were necessary to achieve the sort of form factor Apple was going for. This thing is legitimately smaller in every dimension than the previous hardware. Now let's talk about some of the things that make this a pro machine. Number one, you have an option to configure up to one terabyte. Yes, one terabyte with a T of storage on your iPad Pro. That is a significant win for creative professionals who work in video and high resolution raw photos. This makes a big difference. And if you configure a one terabyte iPad Pro, look, you now get six gigabytes of RAM compared to four gigabytes on lesser storage configurations and last generation models. It is sort of a bummer that you can't get the six gigabytes of RAM without paying so much for the one terabyte storage configuration, but it's Apple. If I said I was shocked, I'd be lying. Okay, so let's look at the benchmark comparisons using Geekbench 4, and here is where the new iPad Pro lays the smack down on last generation's version and even surpasses some models of the 2018 MacBook Pro, which is ridiculous. Last year's iPad Pro was no slouch, but here you can see far and away the new iPad Pro in single core handily beats the old iPad Pro, and in multi core, it's no contest. That eight core CPU that can use all eight cores simultaneously really lays down the beats. And you can see right here, it even beats out the 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro i5 quad core. Indeed, this thing is a monster, which makes it a little frustrating because you have all this power yet the limitations of iOS sort of handcuff you. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And speaking of power, let's talk about GPU performance. Apple's custom designed GPU, seven core GPU, you can see it is just no contest compared to last generation. Apple says that its graphics performance compares to that of an Xbox One S, which I don't know, man, you're comparing a dedicated gaming console with active cooling versus a thin and light tablet. That said, the graphics performance on the iPad Pro is nothing short of impressive. Speaking of impressive, let's talk about the feature that I think is the most impressive or the one I'm most hyped about, and that is of course Face ID. I love this feature because it removes friction from the iPad experience. You don't have to do anything. You simply look at your iPad like you normally would, and it does things for you on the fly. It unlocks your iPad. It allows you to log in to support it apps. It allows you to pay for things with Apple Pay. And the iPad now supports tap to wake, which seems like a really small feature on the surface, but it is so nice to have on the iPad. There's no home button, of course, so now you just tap the screen, it wakes up, and your iPad unlocks just like that, seamlessly. It works in any orientation as well. Face ID has been enhanced specifically for the iPad Pro. It's various orientations, whether or not you have it docked at a certain angle with this smart keyboard folio. All these things are considered on the fly because Apple has trained the True Depth camera to consider these various possibilities. And even if you cover up the True Depth camera housing, notice what it does. It actually will point and say, hey, goofball, you've covered it up, remove your hand, and now it unlocks just like that. Super cool. 
And because of that True Depth camera, for the very first time, you get an emoji on an iPad. So you have all your emoji characters, and you can even create your own emoji character using the new Memoji functionality found in iOS 12. This allows you to create your own avatar. You can customize it to your liking to look like you or anyone else. And Apple's Clips app has been recently updated. It too works with the True Depth camera. You can use it with selfie scenes to put yourself in the action. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the most fundamental changes to the iPad hardware, and that is of course the removal of the home button. Like with the iPhone 10, gestures rule. So you can use a gesture to quickly go back to the home screen. You can use a gesture to quickly open up the app switcher, just swipe up and hold for a second. You can use a gesture to invoke the dock, just simply swipe up from the bottom and tap one of the apps you wish to switch to. And if you wish to switch between opened apps, you simply swipe on the home indicator like this, and you can switch between apps that you have open. So as you can see, now that there is no home button, you really have to get used to using gestures to control your iPad. Even something as simple as waking and unlocking your device, yep, it's all gesture based. And using Face ID to authenticate purchases from the App Store, now it works just like it does on the iPhone 10. You double press the sleep wake button, like this, verify with Face ID, and your purchase is approved. And because there is no home button, even Siri gets a change. Yes, to invoke Siri, now you press and hold on the sleep wake button, and Siri comes alive to help you out. Like I mentioned earlier, the speakers have improved on the iPad Pro thanks to a new redesign. Of course, the speakers are thinner to fit inside that thinner chassis, and Apple took the time to create a new woofer and tweeter pair that results in more immersive dynamic sound. However, it's still an iPad, and physics are still a thing. Don't get rid of your HomePod just yet. The rear-facing camera drops from a 6-element to a 5-element lens, and it drops optical image stabilization. Both changes are presumably because of space constraints. However, it's not all bad when it comes to the camera. Now you can record stereo sound, thanks to those extra microphones. And making its debut in this iPad Pro is the Neural Engine, which allows for things like Smart HDR, which works really well. If you've seen our iPhone XS review, you know Smart HDR can help out with exposure in very challenging situations. But video also gets an upgrade as well here. You get 4K at 24 and 4K at 60 frames per second now on this brand new iPad Pro, something that wasn't available on the last generation model. So that is a big upgrade. And also the front facing true depth camera can shoot at 60 frames per second in 1080p. So like the previous iPad Pro, 4K footage looks pretty good. Uh, not a lot of complaints there when you consider this is an iPad and you're shooting excellent looking 4K quality footage. And here's where you can see the benefit of Smart HDR. Everything is properly exposed. I didn't touch the screen to adjust exposure at all. Everything is just done on the fly thanks to that neural engine and Smart HDR. And this is a fairly challenging situation with the sunlight and the dark areas. You're getting proper exposure. Smart HDR is no joke. It is a serious upgrade. Now, one negative thing about the new iPad Pro is that you do lose optical image stabilization. And this hurts not only with the obvious video and handheld footage, but it also hurts low light photography. There's no other way to say it. This thing is pretty abysmal when it comes to low light shots. Another iPad first is portrait mode. Now, not on the rear facing camera, but on the true depth camera, you can actually pull off some decent looking portrait shots as long as you have plenty of light. You need plenty of light to pull this off. The new smart keyboard folio and the new second generation Apple Pencil are simply must have products in my opinion if you want to really use your iPad Pro to its full potential. What you'll find is that both of these products answer some of the common complaints expressed by iPad users. The smart connector on the smart keyboard has been relocated. You now get multiple viewing angle magnetic attachments. And because it adopts a true folio setup, it now protects both the front and rear of your iPad Pro, which is something that a lot of users, including yours truly, complained about the last version. So this is a big upgrade. The iPad Pro features over 100 magnets that are precisely aligned, which makes it easy to attach official accessories without having to finagle with it. It just works. Now, thanks to those magnets, when the keyboard folio is closed, it will stay attached to your iPad Pro, 
But as you notice, the edges are still exposed, so be careful. Having two viewing angles is a huge improvement with the Smart Keyboard Folio compared to the last generation version. And because there are so many strong magnets, it really takes some effort to detach the iPad Pro from the Smart Keyboard Folio. I've tested it on my lap and it is truly suited now for getting work done in traditional laptop style. So overall, this thing is a huge improvement over the previous version. And of course, there is the second generation Apple Pencil. Consequently, the first generation Apple Pencil will not work with the new iPad Pros, and this Apple Pencil won't work with the old iPad Pros. But what's really nice is that it now attaches to your iPad Pro via magnets and charges in pairs wirelessly. This instantly makes the new Apple Pencil so much better than last generation's Apple Pencil. I can't tell you how many times I lost my old Apple Pencil or I just forgot to take it with me. I don't have to worry about that now. And the pencil also supports tap gestures. So if you double tap, you can switch tools right there within apps. And when you dock the Apple Pencil, it tells you how much battery is left. Thumbs up if you like to see a more in-depth video on the Apple Pencil. Another big new feature for the iPad Pro is the transition from lightning to USB-C, and that brings with it a whole bunch of new USB-C accessories like this one right here, the USB to SD card reader, which actually supports UHS-2 cards. And then you have this right here, which is kind of funny. It's the USB-C to headphone jack. Yeah, that's a thing. And you have the USB-C to USB-A adapter. Now you may be thinking, wow, this is exciting. I can connect all my great USB-C devices to the iPad Pro and really use this as a professional device. For instance, I'm editing a video right now with LumaFusion, and it's a desktop class video editing app. But you're gonna see that the iPad Pro still has some annoying limitations, which simply handcuffs the hardware. It's a limitation of iOS. For instance, notice here, I'm plugging in a UHS-2 card from my Sony a7 III. Now I plug that in, guess what happens? The Photos app opens up, but there's no import option. It's like it doesn't even see the card. It doesn't recognize its format for whatever reason. This Sony formatted SD card just doesn't want to talk to the iPad Pro, which is ironic because Apple actually has a Sony camera on its press materials, on its website, connecting to the iPad Pro via USB-C. And because iOS frustratingly forces you to use the Photos app to import photos and videos. Everything wants to upload to iCloud. I don't want huge multi gigabyte files going to iCloud. That's so frustrating. Here's another frustrating thing. Connecting a USB flash drive, yeah, it has absolutely no effect. In fact, it tells you straight up, no, you can't do this. Now this again is another iOS limitation and it seems silly considering this is an iPad Pro it costs nearly $2,000 and you still can't use external drives. Now I understand iOS 13 will hopefully bring about changes for the better in this regard, but skeptics are gonna say, hey, Apple just wants you to pay for more internal storage space. They don't want you using external storage because they want that margin, the markup from their super high flash storage prices. And it's hard to argue against that, to be honest. But we will wait for iOS 13. I am very optimistic because I think a lot of stuff was put on the back burner or delayed because they wanted to get iOS 12 just right. But really, my thoughts hinge on iOS 13. If iOS 13 brings some real improvements to the iPad Pro to match its spectacular hardware, then this machine has the potential to be one of the best computers ever. But a lot of that depends on the individual user and their needs. I know a lot of people that could be just fine with this iPad Pro in its current state. In fact, with some clever workarounds and some back-end hardware changes, you know, I could probably do my day-to-day -day job with this iPad Pro. Pound for pound, this machine is so impressive and it makes you really want to use it day to day. Here's hoping iOS 13 swoops in and comes to the rescue with the key for the handcuffs to unlock the full potential of this powerful beast of a computer. Special thanks to our friends over at Hyper for sponsoring 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube. Of course, Hyper makes excellent USB-C hubs for the Mac and now the same hubs work on your iPad Pro. 
but it gets better. They're actually working on a dedicated iPad Pro hub solution with all sorts of I.O. It's coming soon. Check the description for the details. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.